Hey guys, it's Andrea. I'm back with another cook with me. This one's from Every Plate. We're going to be making up this broccoli cheddar bisque with garlic bread today. If you guys want to sign up to Every Plate, Every Plate, I'll put a link down below where you can get 20 bucks off your first order. And sometime during the course of the video, you'll see a little pop-up in the corner. That will be my original unboxing where you can learn more about Every Plate and see everything I got. Let's start with the ingredients. For this meal, we have some 2% milk, some fresh broccoli florets, three cloves of garlic, some sour cream, some cream cheese, some veggie stock concentrate, some shredded cheddar, and a demi baguette. This is gonna be our garlic bread, obvi. Let's get to cooking. First things first, I've got my utensils out. I've got a cookie sheet laying out. I've got the oven preheat to 425. I've got my pot to cook my soup in. What are we doing first? First, we're gonna chopping broccoli, chopping broccoli. Chopping broccoli, chopping broccoli. Let me get this washed and prepped. All right, this is a big job here. This is some big, huge, Broccoli florets. We're just gonna chop them up into smaller pieces. I'm actually, the, the recipe doesn't call for this, but um, I'm gonna use an emulsifier and make it extra creamy when it's done cooking. So that will chop up the rest of the broccoli very, very fine. You can leave it more chunky if you want to. Personal preference. I don't like mine chunky, I like mine creamy. Nothing like broccoli and cheese, huh? It's just freaking delicious, y'all. And I've actually had this soup before and I loved it. Spoiler alert, it's yummy got the big knife out for this job today. Now you can reserve some of this broccoli for garnish. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put it all in my soup. Okay. I probably should have made way for garlic because we got to do our garlic next. <clears throat> which I'm going to use my handy dandy new garlic press for that Ooh! for the first time you guys get to see me using it for the first time first thing though I'm going to peel it it said in the reviews of the garlic press you didn't have to peel it but I just think that you need to peel it I think it, it's going to press up much better if it's peeled and it's not a big deal to peel it. Just smash it and the um, peel comes right off. It is no big deal y'all. See? And my press that you'll have seen in, if you watched my um, Amazon haul video you saw when I got that in and I told you how much it was and linked it So if you're interested in any of that information look at that video posted Sunday It's Sunday right now, but I'm just posting that video. So this won't be posted till later <laughs> Okay Come here garlic press here she is it's large capacity so it should be able to hold. Well, these are some huge cloves, but yeah, it looks like it's holding all of them. Here goes nothing. So far, nothing but juice coming out. Oh, there it goes. There it goes, y'all. Looky there. 
looky there. And look what's neat about this is you can flip it, go it this way, so the plastic thing pushes through there, and you can get the rest of it. That is awesome. Isn't that cool? Now I'll just run it under the water and clean it off. I'm just going to do this because of that last sheet of garlic, you know. Make sure that's minced up. Yes! Whew, success! I'm glad that worked so good. Okay. Let's get to, oh, I gotta do my onion. I'm gonna have to get a new chopping board. I forgot to even have my onion out when we did the um, walk through the ingredient. All right, we're gonna half it. Save the other half for whatever you please. Peel this. Ooh, that oven is heating up the kitchen. If you leave the root on it like that, not only is it much easier to dice, you'll avoid a lot of tears. Because for some reason, that's what makes your eyes water. So I'm going to pull my knife through most of this onion. Not all the way to the root, but almost to it. So it's staying intact. Mostly. Then start cutting it through this way. We'll get a nice dice on it like this. Then you're going to go in. It pretty much is dicing itself at this point. It's just falling apart into a dice. And the extra on the end. Just get your knife at it. I'm using my jumbo knife today because I had all that broccoli to do. There. Done. Bam. Throw that away. Now we can start putting stuff to heat. Now this recipe did have a customization. If you wanted to add bacon to it, you could at an extra cost. Instead of adding bacon to mine, I'm just gonna use some bacon grease that I have set aside instead of the butter to cook my onion in. So I'm gonna heat this up to medium. I have my reserved pot of bacon grease here that I keep in the fridge. It's calling for two tablespoons of butter. So, I'm gonna do, and it's stale bacon grease, y'all. I love that, I got this off of Amazon too. I can't remember how long ago it's been. But it's got a screen here, so when you drain your bacon, the pieces get caught. So you've just got the pure grease underneath. All right, my grease is all melted in there and sizzling a little bit, so I'm gonna add in my onion. I've got my heat on medium. <clears throat> it says medium high, but that's way too hot for my stove. Anyway, this, this would be black if I was cooking this over medium high. You just got to know your, you know, know your cookery, how to gauge the temp. And I'm going to add three fourths. or a third. I'm gonna add a third of my garlic. They say three fourths. Why would it, it be a third? There's three cloves of garlic. Three fourths. Three fourths. What? Well, I guess three fourths would be a little bit more than a third. Yeah. 
Anyway, reserve a little bit of your garlic for your garlic bread. <clears throat> We're gonna cook this onion and garlic for about four to five minutes. Add salt and pepper. Which my bacon's pretty, you know, salty. So I gotta take that into account as well. Here we, I'm gonna go ahead and work on prepping my garlic bread. I'm gonna cut this stimmy baguette in half. In here is where the rest of that garlic is going. In this little bowl. Put some olive oil in there too. And we're just gonna make this 10, 15 seconds just to get that garlic sizzling. All right, I'm going to, it, the recipe doesn't call for you to butter the bread. It just calls for the olive oil and garlic. I'm gonna use both. I'm just doing all kinds of changes in this. What, Stella? What were you asking me though? You wanna see a picture of it? It's just garlic and cheese soup. There's not going to be chunks of broccoli. Garlic and cheese. Broccoli and cheese. What? what no. Sour cream? Okay. You just want the soup. No garnish? No. Not if you don't want it. All right. Now I'm going to... You want you want the red stuff on it? That's hot sauce. Okay. Now you're going to take your garlic. That is isn't come up with this brush. It never works out for me. Anyway, take your olive oil and garlic and paint your bread. Okay. This is a two serving soup two-person serving soup um but it's pl it's plenty more than that to me like if all like if Sam wanted to have some soup too there'd be a plenty for all three of us in my opinion all right we need to add the yeah, seasonal salt and pepper and then I'll just go ahead and stick this on my cookie sheet when we're ready to toast it, it'll be ready to go. All right, my onion is lightly browned. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of flour. Make a roux. This is gonna be, you know, a couple, one to two more minutes for this. We're gonna brown up the flour. This is our thickening agent. So, be back in a couple minutes. Now I'm gonna um, slowly, gradually stir in the milk. I'm trying to stir left-handed. Let's swap, goofy girl, okay. Gradually incorporate your milk. I'm scraping up all those yummy bits on the bottom as I go. Timer was still going from the roux. Okay. Now we're going to add in a cup and a half of water. One half. One half. I'm going to make my little extra creamy instead of the other half of 
water. I'm gonna add in some heavy whipping cream. Oh yes, oh yes, darling. Tweaking it, tweaking it just a little bit. Now my veggie stock concentrates, two of them. And generously salt and pepper. Remember, I gotta take into account my bacon fat in there. So I'm not gonna salt it as much as I would. I like lots of pepper though. Okay. Get that mixed up. I salt and peppered my wooden spatula. Oh, we're gonna bring this to a simmer. I'm gonna put, I had pulled my heat down to a medium low because even that was too hot. I'm gonna put it back up to medium and bring this to a simmer. And then I'm gonna cook it until thickened, which would be about six to 10 minutes. So I'll check back with y'all. I would start quite frequently because it is so heavily milked. You do not wanna scorch it. All right, guys, it is a freaking beautiful day here today. I've got all the doors um, and windows open. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. I'm trying to get some breeze go through here because it is hot in front of this oven. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in my garlic bread so I can get this done and turn off the oven because it's cooking me. These are gonna cook, I'm gonna put them on the top rack, about three to five minutes. My roux here, it's starting to thicken nicely. I'm trying to get it up to simmer. I've been struggling with that. But it is still thickening up, so that's all right. Still working on a chain game, working down, down, down. Yeah, it's simmering. It's simmering now, just barely. I'll check back. All right, I'm turning my heat down to medium low now. It's it's getting a pretty harder boil going. It's thickened, and I'm fixing to have to cover it and cook my broccoli, so I don't want to overflow. Add your broccoli in at this point. It's a lot of broccoli. I'm trying not to make a mess. it's this nice when we're in Branson this week. You'll be seeing, um, <clears throat> while we're in Branson, I'm going to try to save some videos to put up, you know, in the interim, because we're going to be gone for four days. You know, I've always got extra videos. And I'll probably be um, doing, like, our vacation photos like I did last year, just slideshows to share, share our time with y'all. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be in Brains on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right. I have incorporated my broccoli. We're going to cover the pot and cook this for four to six minutes until the smaller broccoli pieces are very tender. And I'll be back. Now, be sure and stir this occasionally as well. I just stirred it. <clears throat> my bread's ready to come out. Oh, my God. My oven socks so hard, you guys. It's not even toasted. I don't understand how an oven can suck so hard as this one does. So, those aren't toasted at all false alarm I'll be back one thing I will say about broccoli is it smells like freaking toots let's check on this it's been four minutes I'll probably go all the way to the six because I want my broccoli very tender like I said I'm gonna emulsify it into a creamy bisque so I went and decided just to turn on my broiler to toast up my bread in the last minute because I'm fed up. 
stove top gets too hot, oven doesn't get hot enough. <sighs> Cry me a river. Y'all, it took nearly two minutes in their boiler to do that. I might have to invest in a new oven soon. Okay. Oop. Got some liquid. Okay, so let's turn it down to low. At this point, I'm going to add in my cream cheese and my cheddar and salt and pepper. Cream cheese is something that, like, cheese makes everything better, y'all. Cream, cream cheese, for sure, as well. Okay. Just gonna stir in my cheeses until they're melted and incorporated over low. And, again, salt and pepper. I'm not going to do any salt at this point because I haven't tasted it and I would rather have to add more salt than it be over salted. You know what you can do though if you over salt something like this or like a soup? You can throw in some potato chunks, cut up a potato and throw it in and it soaks up that salt. I've used that trick before with um, chicken and dumplings. I make killer from scratch chicken and dumplings y'all. And one time I oversalted them when I was in a panic. And I tried that trick and it actually works. Now if you feel like your soup's too thick at this point, you can't add a splash of water or a splash of cream. It's, fr it's freaking done. Let's emulsify it, make it creamier. This point, this, this step is of course totally optional. until I can get it creamy I'll be back all right guys let's plate this up I got it pretty creamy pretty creamy yeah yeah that breeze is really coming through now it feels so good it's a beautiful Sunday this is a big old bowl of soup very generous servings. I love ordering soups from these mailboxes. I love soup, but they're always very generous proportions. Or portions. portions. Alright. There it is. Oh, let's make it a little pretty. Let's put some sour cream on top. Little dollop of daisy. Like I said, if you want to do hot, I'm actually not going to do hot sauce on this because I think that would be weird on broccoli and cheese soup. But anyway, let's try it. Let's try this garlic bread first and foremost since this was such a pain to cook. Mmm. Totes worth it. Now for a little creamy soup. Lord, that's hot. Yep, need salt. Need salt. Needs papa. Let's try it again. Mm. 
make it a little cooler this time. Mmm. Just right. Delicious. The only thing I would do differently is add more cheese. Which I might add more cheese now at this point as well. Put a little sprinkle on top. What do you guys think? Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, guys. Subscribe if you like to watch unboxings, cook with me. All kinds of stuff. I'll see y'all at the next one.